Hey dudes, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Bailey and in today's video I am doing a bit of a pup update. So the puppies are two weeks old today and there's a few things that I need to get done and thought it'd be fun to kind of take you guys along with me and also give you guys an update on how everyone's doing. So if you're new here and you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up as well as hit the subscribe button down below and let's just get into today's video. Alright guys, first thing let's mention. The way I look, I feel like you guys normally don't see me with a full face of makeup on and I always look really ratchet, but you get a really good put together version of me today. I went and had lunch with an old coworker of mine, so I got ready for the day. We might be going to dinner tonight, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm kind of staying in. I'm in this really cute comfy set from Target. Really cute, I will leave it linked down below. It's actually pajamas, but I swear it's the cutest and comfiest set I've ever had and I wear it as like just an outfit, so multiple different colors too so thought I would share that with you guys first but I kind of wanted to run through the agenda for today's video and kind of what I'm looking to get done so I want to give you guys an update on the pups show you guys how they're doing I want to take our two-week puppy pictures I want to get our two-week update out to families and I also want to swab our puppies for their genetics so if you guys are new here you may or may not know that we did dual sire this litter I'm not thinking that Briggs has any puppies in the mix just because we used the um, proven stud first so I feel like that stud sperm got to all the eggs before Briggs could but we're still genetic testing just to see not only is the genetic testing going to be for parentage but it's also going to tell us all the genetics of the puppy so I thought once I get that back I can kind of sit down with you guys and kind of go over the genetics and tell you guys you know what all the puppy's genetics is while you're looking at the puppy if that makes sense. Um, I'll kind of go through it a little bit later too when we're doing the swabbing and kind of tell you like the main reasons I am excited to do their genetics and get it back besides the parentage obviously and kind of run through a little bit of that with you guys. So I'm excited but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get ready for their photos and get that set up and then we're going to take our two week photos. you guys can see oh peep the dogs I am using the same setup as I have been using I've been wanting to keep it pretty consistent with puppy photos so I've got our little island litter theme set up going and I also need to run and get my ring light so obviously there's good lighting so I'm gonna go grab that and then we're gonna do puppy pictures all right guys I got the ring light set up as you can see and I wanted to kind of sit down real quick and give you guys a couple different pointers on how I shoot my puppy photos. So basically I obviously get my setup going. Um, underneath this blanket right here, the blue blanket, I have my heating pad, have it turned on to high so when the puppies lay in the box, it's warm. So that's tip number one, use a heating pad. Then I obviously have a ring light. I use a ring light and natural lighting if I have it, um, but I don't have like a really good backdrop where I can set up like in front of windows right now so I really do rely on the ring light to give me that good lighting and then I also use my iPhone but I shoot in portrait mode I do have an iPhone 13 plus or something like that it's like one of the most newest updated iPhones so the camera is really good but in order to get that really blurry background and that crisp look to the photos I do shoot in portrait mode and then I go in Lightroom and edit the photos. And then after Lightroom, I go into Canva and add the text over it. So that's kind of my process, that's kind of my tips. And I'm gonna get a blanket out and lay the puppies out here on a blanket, maybe let Indy in, see if she wants to nurse while I'm shooting their photos. And then I'm gonna clean out their box because they're at the point now where they're peeing insane amounts and it's like soaking wet in there. So I'm gonna get them on a blanket, lay them out, and then start our photos. That was not working. They're either hungry or just grumpy, so I put them with mom. I'm gonna let her nurse for a little bit while I change out these pads. I don't have any of that clean, so I'm just gonna pull this one out and put a new one down while they nurse. So hopefully, we can actually get pictures done. I was hoping 
I wouldn't let them get near mom, I have to restart. So basically, when you do a genetic health testing, they can't be near their mom for like an hour and a half before you swap them. So I'm gonna have to restart the clock. So I'll do pictures, put them back in their box, give them whatever's left of that time, and then swap them after that because it has to be an hour and a half before they come in contact with the swab from mom so it doesn't like contaminate the DNA, if that makes sense. So I have to restart our hour, but hopefully this makes pictures go smoother because I spent 15 minutes with one puppy and she screamed the whole time. So puppy pictures are probably one of the hardest parts of this job for sure. So I'm gonna go take this, lay this back down so the box is ready once they're done eating. All right, the new pad is down, so it's ready for when they come back. I also ended up turning down the heating pad because I'm thinking that's starting to get a little too hot since they're older now. So, mom's still feeding them, and hopefully once they're done, we're gonna retry these photos and hope they go a little bit smoother than last time, huh girl? Are your babies going to cooperate? No, okay. <laughs> finished with puppy pictures like 20 minutes later and I'm sweating it's so hot outside so the air conditioners can't keep up it's really miserable and I would just like to say as a breeder I think puppy pictures are my least favorite thing to do I'm good at them they always turn out great here's a preview right here follow us on Instagram if you don't so you can see them but they are the worst thing ever like these puppies they, I'm, I get their puppies they're so sweet they're so cute but when you're trying to get their pictures it can get very frustrating very quickly, so it's a little, a little bit stressful, but we got it done. They're all laying there now. I'm going to go put them back in their box and then probably wait another hour and 15 minutes before I swab them because Indy did nurse just a minute ago, so I want to make sure we give them plenty of time so we don't mix the DNA, and then I will be back. Actually, I'll probably catch up with you guys while I'm editing these photos and kind of show you guys what I do. All right, guys, as you saw, I just finished the puppy photos and I'll go through and like shift through all of them and I will just favorite the ones I like best and then I will, Willow, off, off, and then I will go through and select, I favorite one of each, so like one favorite. I'll go through and just count and like add them to Lightroom. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got eight, so I know that's correct because there's eight puppies, and then I'm going to upload them into my Lightroom app where I edit our photos, some of my thumbnails, things like that, and then I'm just going to put the preset on that I use. So, hold on. There's before. There's after. So it just kind of brightens it up a little bit. Might go in here for the lighter puppies. I'll kind of bring the brightness down so it's not washing them out as much. Bring my sharpen up a little bit to really show the puppies details. And then I'll just go and do that for every single puppy and adjust where needed. And then once I get done with this part, I will go in and drop the photos into my Canva and kind of edit them and go from there. But this is the first step. I try to take the photos in order. So when I'm editing them and saving them, I know like which puppies which because I can't always see their collar colors. But also for the most part, most of the puppies I can um, tell the difference just by looking at them. They're all slightly different. So once I go through... And some of them, like, I didn't even get really good shots of. But I'm doing that, and I'm going to finish this, and then I'll come back to you guys. All right, now that I'm done, I'm going to go into Canva. And I am going to make a copy of this, which is their one-week photos. I'm going to go into the copy. And then I'm going to change week one to two weeks. And then I'm going to take my phone. And I am going to airdrop the edited photos to me on my computer. See, these were one week. How cute. 
And then I'll drag and drop into my uploads on Canva. And I've got to wait for them to load. But once they're, while they're loading, I'll just go in and change that to two. And I've got to add an S. Weeks. Weeks. Tahiti's loaded, so I'm going to go ahead and, oh, wrong puppy. Drop hers in. Oh. You just drag and kind of hover in the right spot and it'll drop. Okay. Then I'm going to adjust it. I might make it slightly bigger. So she's the main focus. Just like that. That's what I do in Canva and then I'll just export it and share it to my phone or airdrop it back to my phone and I'll be ready to post. All right, guys, I've been sitting here for a while and I've typed my email out. Got all the updates going out to the family. So I'm waiting on a few things and then I'm gonna send this out to our families. And then we've got, let me see if I can find it. 33 minutes before we can swap the puppies. All right, guys, so it has almost been an hour and 30 minutes. I've got like three minutes left. So while I've got about three minutes left, I figured I would come on here and kind of talk about the embark testing, how we're doing it and what we're going to be looking for. So I'm going to screen record my phone and pull up my embark to kind of go through it with you guys. Kind of like a mini lesson on genetics. So what we'll do is we'll swab the puppies each for a good bit and then I'm going to go ahead and weigh them and do their ENS and ESI. While I have them up here, I'm going to do them one by one. And then we're going to swab them, send it off. It normally takes like three weeks. So just so you know, we've got a while to wait, but hopefully it'll be quick. And then once we get that back, we will, well, before I get that back, I'm going to send them an email and be like, hi, my name's da da da. I'm sending in these swab numbers and I'll write their little swab numbers down on a piece of paper. I need to get a piece of paper to do that and be like, are they related to this dog on my account swab number this and then they'll be able to compare the COI which is the coefficient of inbreeding and see if they're related to any of the pups. Um, you can't physically like go in and see it on Embark. You have to request that. But we'll go into Indy's profile just to kind of show you guys what I'm looking for and what I'm excited that this is going to kind of show us and also give our puppy parents. So we've got predicted adult weight for Indy which is 58 pounds. It tells you the genetic age. You can add photos, documents, and then the main ones we're looking at is health and traits. My phone is not cooperating. So if we go into health, it says that, good news, there's no genetic health conditions for that puppy. I know that all these puppies are going to be clear or potentially carry ichthyosis. I think that's how you say it because the stud carries that. Briggs is clear though, Oliver carries that. But a carrier just means that they carry the genetic composition for that disease. But since Indy's clear, you have to have two copies to be affected. So one copy will not affect them in any way. And then going into traits, they'll be able to see these traits and see what their puppy carries. Um, the main ones they're going to be probably interested in looking at are the furnishings. So Indy is FI because all F1s are FI because poodles are FF and golden retrievers are II. So Indy is nationally FI. So some puppies will be FI, some, people's, some puppies will be FF. And then the coat texture right there will show you what kind of coat texture they'll have. So wavy, curly, or straight. So CT is wavy, TT is curly, and then CC is straight. And then also shedding, CT is light shedding, TT is light shedding as well, but more likely. And then CC is the least likely amount to shed. Um, obviously, this isn't 100% accurate, but it's pretty accurate. And then you can just kind of go in here and see their different genetics and their makeup and what they could throw. For me, I'll be looking at that part, but for families who aren't breeding, that really doesn't mean as much to them as the furnishings and coat texture and all that means. So that's kind of what it tests for and what we're going to be looking at, obviously to see if Briggs is the dad to any of the puppies, but also to see um, what kind of coats they'll have, wavy, curly, straight and also their predicted adult weight. Um, I've never had Embark be 100% accurate, but they've always overshot. So the puppies have always been that or less. They've never been over the predicted adult weight. So super duper excited to get going and I'm gonna get my kits ready and then grab a puppy and we'll get started. Oh, see, timer's up. All right guys, this is what the package looks like and it has the swab, this baggie for the swab and then 
the instructions in here. What you have to do is you have to go online and activate this. And then once you activate it, you can give the puppy like a profile picture, things like that, and then swap the puppy. So this is the activation code right here. So I'm going to write this down on Tahiti's form and then go get her and then we'll swap her. Okay, I have grabbed Tahiti. I've got the swab. And I'm just going to let her kind of gnaw on it and chew on it for a little bit to activate her saliva. Because puppies don't have a ton of saliva at this age. We want to make sure we get enough. Yeah. So that the kit and the DNA is accurate. Keep on going. up and we really don't want to mess this up so you just shake it, it says swab put it in there and then shake 10 times so swab for 30 to 60, 60 seconds so I feel like I definitely did that with her so you take this little plastic bag we're gonna pop the swab in Close this up so if it does spill, hopefully it keeps it in there. Pop it in this and then seal the miller. And then it's ready to be picked up by the milk carrier. So now that we're done with that, I'm gonna run through her ENS and ESI and her get her weight, and then we're gonna repeat this eight different times. That's Tahiti. Let me show you guys real quick. I'm gonna give you guys like a puppy update on each puppy or just show you guys them. <laughs> Tahiti. So next we're on to oh, we're on to her brother Santorini. Just counted to 60. Now shake 10 times. All right, in it goes. It is about to storm so bad. All right, two pups down. Six to go. But here's Santorini. Very upset at the moment. But that's him. And then real quick, let me show you guys this. Okay, we're getting a storm. Let me show you. Can y'all see the wind out there? Y'all see how windy? See the trees? a storm so <sighs> scary but on to the next pup all right guys up next is Maui and I am planning on keeping a girl back for my program for those of you who are anxiously asking um, if I do end up keeping one though it will go into a guardian home I already have a guardian home lined up for the puppy we just cannot keep any more dogs in my house and I already have an indie puppy Ellie so we are keeping one hopefully as long as everything checks out um and right now just based on things that I know right now I'm looking in between Maui, Tahiti and Capri once I get genetics back and their tournament testing done and can look at their overall structure at around seven weeks old I will make my pick 
But here's Maui. She's one of the girls that are up for the running to be a future mom at Rosemary Doodles. Super pretty girl. She's the darkest of the girls I'm considering. So I'm super excited to see what traits she carries since she might have the potential to be a mom for us one day. So I'm going to get to counting. She was producing some really good saliva, so. Whoop. Oh, make sure we're shutting it good. And she goes. There's my husband freaking out because the storm. Alrighty, three down. Okay, and next we're doing Miss Capri. She's our tiniest puppy right now. And another puppy in the running to be a future Rosary Doodle. I'm really liking her in Tahiti. I mean, I like them all for different reasons, but I do love that they are cream like their mom. Here we go. I probably wouldn't like having a swab shoved up my mouth either, but we got some good saliva on there. I can literally see it, so really happy about that. I think someone's having a bad dream over there. All right, so Capri's done. St. Martin is next. He's been grumpy today. He did not want to behave for photos, so we'll see how he does for this. Look at him sitting up. Come here, buddy. I know you're looking for your mom, but she's not here. Time to swab. He's crowling. He's mad that that was not a nipple. Can you hear him? God, they're so funny at this age. And they act like they hate me at this age because I'm not mom. And in like two weeks, it'll be completely different and they'll be obsessed with me and mom will not want anything to do with them. Alrighty. St. Martin, buddy. You are swapped, and it's ready to go in the mail. So here's St. Martin. <laughs> he reminds me a lot of Banana from the Fruit Litter, if any of you guys were here for that, just his personality. But here he is. Yay, three more. All right, next is Jamaica. And he is screaming, because he wants mom, and I'm not mom. So he's pretty upset. But this is him. He is so pretty. He definitely has the most white markings out of the whole litter. Very similar to Palmer from last litter. So I'm going to start my timer. And get it going. Timer's up. Goodness gracious, that was dramatic, sweet baby. They do not like that. It's because they're so hungry. When they're hungry, man, that is all they care about is a nipple. And I'm not a nipple. See? Not even doing nothing to him, he's screaming. Yeah, are you upset? Are you upset? Say so yes, I'm upset. I'm gonna let mom in as soon as we're done and y'all can have some milk and be so happy. Alrighty. So he's done with that. All right, next is Miss Fiji. She's not really in my plans to potentially keep back just because I think she's gonna be double curl. 
very beautiful i love the curl but i'm trying to stay away from mom's being completely double curl because that kind of limits the variety i can have in my litters but overall she's still beautiful and i'm obsessed with her so i'm gonna hit start and we're going to get to swabbing Chewed on it pretty good. <laughs> Makes me so nervous putting it in the tube and making sure I don't like hit anything. Getting faster at this. Getting my rhythm. Yeah. that one. Good job, Miss Fiji. Good job, girly. One more. All right. Last but not least is Aruba. He's already been pretty vocal. I'm not happy. wait to let mommy back in here to nurse these hungry babies once I'm done so they can get in a better mood and just like that you guys we are done so excited to get the results back in like three to four weeks so hopefully it doesn't take that long because the girl's excited so so here's Aruba. He's not happy. I'm gonna go put him back and let mama in so these babies can finally nurse. Okay guys, we're done and we've got all of them. I know they can be sent back in these mailers and it's no postage, but I think I'm gonna pay the postage and take it to the post office in the morning or on Monday and pay the postage to get them all there at the same time. So none of them get lost or damaged, so. I'm just gonna send it back in this box that they sent it to me in and get them sent in the mail. All right, guys, come on, go in. Look at how active they get and excited they get when they smell mom. I'm gonna get her laid down and get them nursing. Yeah. Oh, girl. Come on, all the way. Good girl. Always help her out. Make sure to get the smaller babes in there. And I'll try to help each puppy get on a nipple. Literally starving. But now they're happy. Mom's chill. And they're going to enjoy. Alright guys, so now that I'm done with that and Indy is nursing, I think I'm going to go ahead and end today's vlog. I'm sure it's already super duper long. We did a lot in today's vlog and it was kind of fun to be able to give you guys a puppy update and let you know how they're doing and also show you guys us swabbing the puppies. I'm so excited to get their genetics back and I can't wait to share that with you guys. I'll do a whole video once we get that stuff back. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up as well as hit the subscribe button down below. It means the world to me when you guys subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!